Join Jessica Smith on the Like a Girl podcast, where she defies odds, shares inspiring stories, and empowers women to embrace their inner leaders. Tune in for a transformative journey. So somehow my brother makes it to California. He's doing good. He's he's on a winning streak. I got my girl, Jessica. She's there now in California. And things are good. Things are really good. We've hired some great people. Business is good. And I am making money like I never thought that I would before. Like money, money, like real money making money. And I'm just excited. I'm thankful. I am by myself. I'm not in a relationship right now. And I'm focused. We had a deal with Mark and Paul that if we made it to, I think it was like top three in sales, uh, we got a um, convertible. It was a black CLK convertible. I'm driving nice. Things are good. So from that standpoint, I guess Pauline is like, all right, well, it's time to go. So she decides that she's ready to go back to Chicago. And really, um, I didn't really sell her on moving to California. It was, I need you to help me. I'm with these kids by myself and I need to get on my feet and, you know, get started. So, so she's ready to go back. But she was there for, I mean, we're like a year and a half into this. And really, like I said, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I, I just, I just need her to know what it feels like to just be clean and, and, and sober. And I'm hoping that that feeling is enough. And she wants more. And um, that didn't happen. So she's ready. She's ready to go back. So, of course, I'm like, well, you know, Xavier, he hasn't even started school at this point. So he's still little. Like, what am I going to do? But I'm also knowing that at some point the guilt trip can't be her why. Like she has to want this life for herself. So she goes back to Chicago and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure something out. I don't know what I'm going to do. Jonathan can take care of himself, but this guy's too little for him to watch after all the time, right? He's got to go to school. And as always, y'all know my thing, I'm a pray. I'm pray my way right through this. And I just began just asking God to help me, show me a way, send help. And I don't remember if she went back before I found help, but I just remember it not taking a lot of time. And I found this school and it was advertised as a private Christian preschool. And I remember going out and meeting the woman, it was an older Filipino woman in Sunnyvale, Fidela was her name, and it was a family business. So she had built an extension onto her home, and it was her 
her husband, her daughter-in-law, her daughter, so her whole family. And I'm like, okay, Lord, is, is this it? And, you know, she she showed me everything that she teaches the kids and all this great stuff, and they learn about God. And And I said, well, here's my thing. What are the hours? And she said, well, you know, we have people that don't get off work until, you know, five o'clock and in the Bay Area, they commute. So sometimes we're here until six, seven, eight o'clock. And so I said, well, I have a job that I never know when I'm going to be done. I'm a sales leader and our hours are retail hours. And sometimes I'm there till 9.05, and then sometimes it's 10, 11. Damn, I've been there since after 12 o'clock before. And she's like, oh, well, wow, um, I'm going to I'm have to think about that. And I said, okay, well, if, if I have to pay you more, I, I can pay you more, but I need coverage until pretty late. Well, one thing led to another, and she was who God sent to help. And so Xavier would go there. I drop him off 12 o'clock, sometimes a little later. And she had a little area for naps in her school. And he would go to sleep right there. And I would pick him up late when I got off. And that's what that's what we did. And I didn't know, how am I going to figure out a way to do this? But I prayed my way through it. So we got through that. And I thought, okay, things things are 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 looking get good here, and uh, maybe I could start dating again because I'm just knowing like being by myself has never been my thing. I've always wanted to uh, be married. I always wanted a partner. I always wanted to just be part of a team. And I'm not going to allow my past and these bad choices that I've made stop me from finding someone that's right for me. So I started dating. And I dated a few people. Uh, During that time, I talked about a guy I dated in Chicago before I left. Uh, Ramon. And I often talk about him as maybe one of the few normal, if you will, or maybe not bad boys that I dated. But he was probably the only one that, I don't know, that didn't Uh, maybe just bore me and we we kept in contact and there was a point in time when I was in California that he called me and he said you know we need to have a, a a serious talk and he shared with me that you know he was he was really hurt that I that I broke his heart when I chose my husband over him And he said, I just didn't understand. Um, He used to call him the jailbird. And he said, I I, I just don't understand how you chose. um, He he was African and he used to say with his act like, you chose this jailbird, a jailbird over me. And so, so he, 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 he took that really personal, but in this conversation, he said, it took me a while and um, I, I forgive you. And I really believe that you were more 
in lust of this big, handsome guy with all his muscles. And, you know, he used to joke around like that, uh, teasing me about that decision. And he said, but I'll tell you, I decided that I, I have forgiven you. He said, even though you haven't asked you haven't asked for forgiveness. I have forgiven you for hurting me the way that you did. And he said, I believe that everything you did and the choices that you made were purely because your heart is just so big and you, you always want to help people. He said, and you married that man to help him not because you loved him or you were in love with him. And I think there's, of course, some truth to that. But uh, by the end of this conversation, he said, I'm willing to pick up everything and leave Chicago and come and be with you in California. Now, even though I don't think that he was um, what I would call a, a, a user, I just couldn't help but to be skeptical about, well, what's your situation look like? Because he understands that I'm, I'm, I'm doing well right now. And who knows? Maybe it was just the, the skeptic in me, but... I I declined and I said, you know, I'm a believer that we should leave the past in the past and and never go back. For whatever reason, the relationship did not work. It didn't go to the next level and the memories of our relationship will always be in my heart. And I truly believe that he loved and cared about me, but it wasn't where I was. I, wa- I wasn't feeling it. And he, j- he got quiet. And he said, okay. That was... That was the last conversation we had. And I don't know, fast forward how many years later, I got a call from my cousin and he said, hey, you know, when's the last time you spoke with Ramon? And I said, well, it's, it's, it's been a while. And he said, well, I know you, you um, probably don't know this, but he he was in a car accident and I saw it on the news. And if you want to look it up, but he's um he 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 passed away. And I said, What? And I checked it out and uh he he passed away in a car accident. So, you know, I had reached out to him a few times after that conversation, but he um he didn't take my calls, but here I, I appreciated our friendship, our relationship. And, um, just, it just, it just wasn't, wasn't in the cards. I continued down my dating path in the, in the Bay area. And I just had all type of troubles. I remember, uh, meeting, he was a principal, and of course, I heard the same thing. You're, you're a, you're a beautiful girl. You're smart. You're successful. You have a lot of things going for you. Why do you always attract bad boys? Or, you know, find yourself. You could find a doctor or a lawyer or engineer in Silicon Valley. And I remember dating this. He was a, a principal of a school, and uh, really nice nice guy 
good looking because I'm shallow like that. And the, we just we just didn't click. And I tried. Lord knows I tried. And I, I you know, he, he always told these jokes, these corny ass jokes. And every time I just found myself like fake laughing, which I just don't do well. And I finally got to the point where I said, listen, we're just not, we're not a good fit. And he was like, what? Are you kidding me? I thought we were getting along great. He's like, I, and I remember him even saying, you're funny. I enjoy being with you. You make me laugh. And I'm thinking to myself, you are not, and you do not make me laugh. And that is such an important quality for me. I like to laugh. I like to have fun. And you have to make me laugh, like genuinely make me laugh. And so that didn't work out. I dated another guy who was a Silicon Valley engineer, super nice guy, um, African, and turned out things were uh, things were going okay. Um, he, he was a little more controlling than I like. A, a, just a little stronger personality. I think, you know, for me, I needed a good balance. And with my personality being pretty aggressive, we were probably, yeah, too much, too up there. Well, turns out this dude had a whole wife in Africa. And she went, I guess she was there the whole time. Um, having a baby, but turns out that um, I went to his house one night and we had, I'm not sure if he didn't know she was coming that night or what the deal was, but we had plans and I didn't think anything, called him, tell him I was on my way, get there, ring the bell, a whole wife answers the door newborn baby in her hand. And I'm like, uh, is so-and-so here? So, oh, hold on one moment. And he comes to the door and introduces me as his realtor. Which, funny that he did that since I'm a, I am a licensed realtor today, but he, he introduces me as his realtor and, uh, she says, "Oh yeah, um, would you like to come in?" And he said, "Oh no, no, um, I'm just let me just step outside." She, I said, "No, no, I would love to. I would love to come in." And he's looking at me like, "Are you for real right now?" So she invites me in, and we just sit and chit chat. She offers me something to drink. Absolutely, thank you. I mean, so after, of course, you know, playing along. He didn't know where this was going to go. But I left and I left quietly and I just sat there. I remember sitting there in my car like, what the hell was that? Like, what just happened? And, you know, thankfully, like I said, I, I knew that we were not compatible as far as a long time relationship. So um, there wasn't a lot of, you know, there, there wasn't a lot invested, let's just say at this point. Uh, but I just thought, wow, this, 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 this sucks. And, you know, there, there, there were a few others and it just, it was the same thing over and over again. You know, he's, he's too corny or he's too nice or this guy is a total asshole or he's too controlling. And it was, you know, there's, let me just say, we, we know there's no perfect man, right? There's no perfect man. But these were things for me that are just deal breakers. 
So I'm like, I'm good. I decided that I, I'm just, I'm just not going to do much dating. I'm just going to focus on making money. And that was kind of what, what what the plan was. I got my girl here. We go out. We got a little favorite place that we go to. Um, we have drinks on the weekend. I come home and I'm good. Until that, that one night. And we were, oh, I know where it was. We were at it was it was it was Jessica and um I we were at a we were at a reggae club that's where we went we went to a reggae club in San Jose and I remember being outside and I think this was this was the end of the night it was definitely the end of the night because I had had a few to drink and we're walking to the car and he caught my attention because I remember saying, wow, he looks like Montel Jordan. Unless I'm that like tipsy, like I think he looks. Like. And so I walked up to him and I said, has anybody ever told you you look like Montel Jordan? And he had braids and he smiled. And when he smiled, I saw he had a gold grill in his mouth. And I was like, oh no, again, deal breaker. He looked at me and I could tell right off the bat, I know, I know that look. So there's, there was this thing where, this is going to sound funny. I never, after my first husband, I had figured out that there was something called chubby chasers and what what I call a chubby chaser is a man who says he likes big girls purely from the standpoint that his intention is to use abuse and take advantage of trust me it's a real thing I promise you so with that being said I had a strategy which was and and, and even in in high school, if you were someone that was known to date big girls, I don't want to have anything to do with you, okay? Now, remember, I'm like 300 pounds, and I'm like, I'm dating guys on the football team, I'm dating guys on the basketball team, and I know what people were thinking. People were thinking, how in the hell did she get, what, like how, and so, In this moment, I could totally tell that he wasn't attracted to me, which somewhere in my sick mind, I'm more attracted to him now because now it's like a challenge, right? Again, this sounds crazy. I realize it, right? Therapy has helped me see how crazy my my, my thought process was, but this is what it was. And so we ended up exchanging numbers. And now if you ask him today, he will not admit it, but this is true story. That night he butt dialed me and he had all his boys with him. And I heard the conversation loud and clear. And it was, hey, did you get, did you get her number? And he was like, what? He's like, yeah, I mean, I just took it. He was like, but you know me, like, I don't do no big girls. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do no fat girls. And his boy talking in the background says, dude, are you crazy? Did you not see? Did you not see that car she pulled off in? Did you not see all that Tiffany around her neck and her and had this whole conversation? Again, I found it. Um, I found it humorous. And I I wasn't looking for a relationship at this point. Just being real at this point, it was just like, okay, this is something to do on the weekends. I'm tapping out of this dating thing and this is just this is just what it's gonna be. Okay. As trifling as that sounds, that's just real. That's what it was. Now, 
And I can also see that he is a little younger than me. And the next day I was, I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait to see. And I, so I end up calling him and just in conversation again, I can tell that he's really not into me. I call him the next day and I said, Hey, you know, just wanted to see me and my girl. We're going to go hang out. He was like, yeah, let me call my boy up and let's see, you know, we'll meet you guys out. So we just start hanging out and I can tell that as time is going on and we're hanging out more that he is becoming somewhat attracted to me. And for me, it's like, this is like a little, some sick little game because I'm like, oh, okay, you don't, oh, you don't like big girls? Okay, well, I'll show you. And I think even at some point, you know, one thing as a big girl that I was told, which lesson number one, never, never tell a big girl you got a pretty face. Because I knew what that meant, which was you're cute, but you're fat. Okay. So. I knew what I was walking into. However, it did not change the fact that I'm a competitive person. You put a challenge in front of me, I'm going to get it. And so I start this journey on, I don't know, I don't know if you can call it a, a, a game, boredom, whatever it was. We are, you know, hooking up at hotels because, I mean, I got two boys at home and I'm not bringing anybody home, but it's a nice distraction from like, I'm just, I can't do this dating thing. First and foremost, it just takes too much time. And between work and kids, I don't have the extra time. So this was, this was This was my mentality, but it was something very casual and it was no commitment. I can do this. I I, I can handle this. Thank you for tuning in to another insightful episode of Lead Like a Girl. We hope you found today's podcast valuable. If you enjoyed our podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your preferred platform. Your feedback is crucial in helping us continue to provide high quality content. If you found the content inspiring, we would like to encourage you to share this podcast with your network. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories and leadership insights on Lead Like a Girl. Until next time, lead with passion and purpose.